Hi, my name is Bill Weiss. I'm the author of the book, 23 Minutes in Hell, and thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you today about the son of perdition. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4, it says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So before the Antichrist, or as he is called in this verse, the son of perdition, is revealed, there will first be a falling away from God worldwide. Now the word for falling away in the Greek language conveys the idea of a rebellion against God. We have seen this increasing in the world, even among those who identify themselves as Christians. You know, let's think about it. For billions of people to welcome this world leader and believe his lies, a massive change would have to occur in the world's attitude towards God, the Bible, Christians, and Jews. Now, we are witnessing the spirit of hatred and anti-Semitism toward Jewish people as we have not seen since Hitler and the Nazis during World War II. In addition, thousands of Christians are being murdered all over the world, and for the most part, the news media is silent about it. Now, once an anti-God mentality dominates society, the world will be prepared to receive the Antichrist. Paul says the man of sin will then be revealed. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 4, Take heed that no one deceives you. The world is being prepared or primed for this world leader's domination. Now, media has been feeding people lies and narratives that sound right, good, and compassionate. Yet these lies sow anger, hatred, and division into the hearts of minds of many. Now, will this future global leader use the media to deceive the world and gain support? Well, you can bet on it. But for now, this man of sin is hidden or concealed. It's interesting that his title in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3, is the son of perdition. Now, in the scriptures, the only other reference to the son of perdition is in John 17, 12. And this is regarding Judas, Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. Now, the word perdition is mentioned in several verses, including 2 Peter 3, 7, Hebrews 10, 39, Philippians 1, 28, and 2 Peter 3, 7 says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So Strong's Concordance, uh, the word is apala ai. Uh, and it has the meaning of destruction, which consists of eternal misery, perdition, uh, excluded from the kingdom of God, doomed to eternal ruin. Now, the son of perdition is a fitting title as this world leader will literally bring extreme ruin and destruction to the earth and to mankind. He will be opposed to God and all that God represents. He is also described as the man of lawlessness. He will be without law, more than a lawless attitude. Now, we see this spirit at work now throughout the world, leaders exalting themselves above the law with no regard to established laws and uh, devising laws to perform their own deeds, as Psalms 94.20. They devise laws for their own wicked deeds. Psalms 94.20 says they frame their mischief by a law. Now, in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, it states that when the son of perdition is revealed, he will begin to exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship. He will come as an angel of light, a savior to the world. And wasn't this exactly what Lucifer tempted to do in Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, which says, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. And we know that Satan will completely take over and possess this world leader. In 2 Thessalonians 2.4, it states that he will enter a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem where he will declare himself to be God incarnate. In 2 Thessalonians 2.9, it states that he will use supernatural signs and wonders to try to prove he is God. 
Now, Jesus warns us in Matthew 24, 24 about the last days. He says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, people will be so amazed at his feats that they will follow him. In the world's eyes, his signs will look extraordinary. Gee, I wonder if he will uh, have the help of AI and technology. You know, any true Christian who is continuing to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and His Word can sense the time is very short before the rapture of the church and the start of the seven-year tribulation. Now, the good news is the gospel is being preached and many are committing their lives to Jesus Christ and are becoming soul winners. Many are praying and fasting for others, and many are examining their lives to walk in a way worthy of their Lord and their Savior. Now, God is cleansing His church, and young people across the world are waking up and surrendering their lives to Jesus Christ with a passion for God. You know, a Barna survey are uh, reporting that Gen Z, which is the age of 13 to 17, uh, are motivated to continue learning about Jesus. An October 22 Barna survey of 2,000 U.S. adults stated that three out of four say they want to grow spiritually, and 77% say they believe in a higher power, and nearly half say they are more open to God today than before the pandemic. So let's not fear man, but fear God. Let's share God's love and truth with others and reveal Jesus to a lost and dying world.